So let's look at our actual calculations here. Um, first of all, a note about the accuracy. We're going to average the three that are within 0.1 mils, and we're going to discard the other one. So this one we are going to discard. If we were writing a lab report, we would not uh, we would not eliminate it. We would include it in our observations, but we would make a note that it's more than 0.1 out, and we overshot it, so we discarded it. We can now average the other three, but just a note about the accuracy. Um, it's not only the actual titrating, the actual burette, and managing the stopcock. It's everything all together, right? If we didn't have a good pipetting job, maybe we had a different amount of sample in every one, and then that's going to throw your results out. So I know that students tend to focus on getting exactly that drop, but you've got to be precise all the way through, including pipetting your sample. So if I take these three trials and average them, so add them up and divide by three, the average is 11.64 milliliters. So that's basically what we are using as the volume of potassium hydroxide. So we do not know the concentration of potassium hydroxide, but we know that for 0.15 moles per liter KHP and using 100 milliliters of that, sorry, 10 milliliters of that, what we had pipe headed into our sample, uses 11.64 milliliters of the potassium hydroxide. So now you see here a classic stoichiometry problem, right? We have a volume and a concentration. We have a volume and an unknown concentration. So let's uh, go ahead and do the calculation. We can say 10.0 mils of the KHP, and we're going to multiply that by the concentration. Um, if you prefer to do 0 0.010, that's fine it, in liters. Uh, 0 0.15 moles in one liter. And the mole ratio in our balanced chemical equation is one to one. So that is moles of uh, potassium hydroxide to moles of KHP. So this has been KHP, KHP, and I'm continuing my equation on the next line here. We can now divide it by the milliliters of KOH. So 11.64 milliliters of KOH. And find that answer. So just to look at our units here, we have um, milliliters of KHP. Uh, I'm going to actually cross out the liters of KHP with liters of KHP. We have moles of KHP with moles of KHP. We have moles of potassium hydroxide with, uh, sorry, that doesn't cross out, that's still there. Moles of potassium hydroxide, milliliters of potassium hydroxide. The milli here and the milli here can actually cancel. So we are left with moles per liter as our desired units. Makes sense. Our final answer in moles per liter of KOH. And we just have to do the math per liter of KOH. Our concentration of KHP is only known to two sig digs because our scale only read to two decimal places. So we're going to uh, say this is about equal to 0 0.13 moles per liter of KOH. And that makes a lot of sense because I've already told you I attempted to make it at about 0 0.15 moles per liter, but I know that some of the mass could have been water because it's hygroscopic, so it makes sense that the concentration is a little bit less. So that is titration in all the detail. We can see here our samples. Our, our first one that we overshot is clearly a very dark purple, and the others are all very light pink. So this is what we want our samples to look like. Um, it's nice that I actually had an example of uh, an overshot one, even though I didn't try. But uh, we've done the calculation. We've calculated the unknown concentration of our potassium hydroxide. Um, so the only thing left is to make sure you know what to do with the leftovers. Sometimes they have to be neutralized, some things can go down the drain if you dilute them, etc. Well there you go, it's sure handy how cleanup works on a video. I just want to mention that if you were to write up a lab report for this, some of the types of things you'd want to include. Um, so again, our precision in an experiment like this depends on our ability to make 
an accurate standard solution. In this case, we saw the, what the static was doing. We made a note of that. That's definitely something we would include in our observations. Um, a point in our favor is that we had two results exactly the same, and then the third result was uh, close to a milliliter out. So things like that we can make a note of. Any type of uh, side reaction we could have had going on would obviously factor into our results. Uh, and that means the purity of either one of our substances. If they weren't pure, then something else could have been going on. I hope you uh, enjoyed the procedure. Thanks for listening.